never seen Star Wars. None of them. And I never will. Oh my god, but you're missing out. Maybe. But you're missing out on being a multi-millionaire. No, I don't think that's right. Hey guy, welcome back to the internet. A dumb place full of dumb things. Today I'm going to be talking about a few of those dumb things, starting with this guy, Mr. Star Wars. So the past couple weeks, a bunch of people have been tagging me in this Twitter thread or sending it to me, asking me to talk about this guy because he's very similar to Hard Rock Nick. It's Hard Rock Nick. And I'm not going to lie, when I first saw it, I was both pissed and excited because I thought, well, hell yeah, I've got a new video for free, just right here, this is gold. And then I realized he's just trolling everybody. Like if you go through and actually read this entire thread, it's so obvious that it's just bait. He's just trying to piss people off so people quote retweet him and say how stupid he is. And by doing so, they'll go to his dumbass website where you pay him like 500 bucks a year to learn how to be rich. It's the classic business move. I mean, I wish it was real. I wish someone really was this stupid because the idea that if you've seen Star Wars, you can't be rich? That's so dumb. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Hey dude, what you watching? Oh hey, well actually, uh, Return of the Jedi was on TNT, so I flipped over oh, to it. Oh no. I always have to take my shirt off when I watch this movie because oh, no, no, no. it makes me so sweaty. Oh, no. My doctor says it's bad genetics, but I wouldn't know. I never met my parents. It's already happening. <laughs> it's so stupid and dumb, and the more of the thread you actually read, you realize, oh, this guy's just fucking with everybody. Because it's quite the claim to make to say everyone who's ever watched Star Wars in human history is ever absolutely dirt poor. Oh, and it's not just money that you're missing out on by watching Star Wars. You're also a virgin and you're ugly and a girl will never talk to you because you've seen a popular movie franchise. Has a girl ever tattooed her name on you? No. It's because you've watched Star Wars. That one actually is true. That happens to me all the time. How's it going back there? Oh, I'm actually almost done. I'm just uh, finishing up the W. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait to have the name Drew tattooed all over my big, fat butt. Tell me about it, Drew's the best. I'll never forget a couple years ago, uh, we were in line at the movies and I'd forgotten my wallet. That's nice. But good old Drew swooped in, paid for my ticket, and uh, we had a great time. Even though Han died at the end. <sighs> what movie was it? The Force Awakens, why? Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. This is fine. Um, cuz you could just uh, erase the tattoo, right? You can't erase a tattoo. That's not how- Well, you gotta do something, man! I'm sorry, but you're stuck with Dre forever! No! This is me in Switzerland with a female. You've never heard of females before because you watch Star Wars. And the thing is, that's all true. Here's a few things you may not know about me. I know what a lightsaber is. I have a general understanding of how the Force works. I am aware of Jar Jar Binks, but I've never seen a girl. I not even know what that is, because I've seen Star Wars. And of course all this dumbass shit he's pretending to think is just a marketing tool to get you to quote tweet all of this shit that's all pointing to his website where he can somehow maybe make money. How to make money with a webcam. This costs about a thousand dollars. I'll save you a thousand dollars by telling you what this course probably is. Um, you want to make money with the webcam? Take off your clothes in front of it. I like this one a lot, Tate's War Room. Um, as you can see on his website, the Tate signature is probably like a PNG file he has and he uses for all these logos, but it doesn't have an S in it. So for this one, he needed to just like add in an S and it's a different font and it doesn't match. Yeah, I think I'll give this guy 600 bucks. He seems to be really smart. <laughs> There's almost something paradoxical about courses like this, where this guy probably isn't a millionaire yet, but if he can just get people to give him money so he can tell them how he got money, then he'll have money because people gave him money and that's how he gets money. And then he'll tell you how he made money. And then you give him money because he gave you money. I think the best part of this whole thread is this video that he throws in somewhere in the middle. This is the kind of life you live if you've never seen Star Wars. And it's a video edited in the style of like those now this videos, you know what I'm talking about? That makes it seem very official. It makes it seem unbiased, but clearly he just made it himself. He's been called the real life James Bond. By who? I'm pretty sure that just means one day he was like, hey, you know what? I just realized I'm kind of like the real James Bond for like real life. And then since he said it, you can just say, it has been said. His mind blowing Instagram. Let's visit his Instagram. Oh my God, he's got pictures on his Instagram? Just like goddamn everybody else? Uh, yeah, that's pretty mind blowing. He's traveled to 71 countries. 
including active war zone. I guess I understand that as like a brag, like, whoa, this guy is not scared of nothing, not even war. See, but in this scenario, he's trying to sell us his lifestyle. He's saying like, do what it says on my website and you too could be in the middle of a war zone. <laughs> No thanks. Give me a thousand dollars and you too could be the subject of international scrutiny. All right, you finally sold me. I think I'll sign up. Clearly this guy is an idiot, right? Uh, but it's very calculated. He's not accidentally dumb. There's a few different ways to get people to pay attention to you online. Uh, there's the more traditional route of like having a talent. Uh, you can also follow a trend. You see what's working for other people and you try to do your own version of that. Um, or you can just publicly be an idiot and or an asshole and do it so well that people can't resist the urge to talk about you. And even though it's nothing but negative publicity, you're still getting publicity. There's a couple brothers that come to mind when I think about that. Uh, there's a certain kissy prankster that also comes to mind. That's a route that you can go down. This isn't a new thing. It's just like, if you don't have talent, be an idiot. Yeah. Next topic. Hmm. That's kind of a fun transition that I just thought of and no one else on YouTube has ever done before, only me. I think this next thing is actually even worse than that because it wasn't posted by some random jackass looking for attention. This was posted by CNBC, you know, a supposedly reputable news source. It's a video called, this simple tipping trick could save you over $400 a year. So they're gonna teach us how to tip the correct way, a little a little life hack, if you will, uh, and it will save us hundreds of dollars. Let's check it out. Hopefully it's not a surprise to learn that it's customary to tip 15 to 20% on top of your bill, according to the etiquette experts at the Emily Post Institute. But what exactly does that apply to? For example, take a look at my bill. It was $100 and then 108 after tax. So do you tip on the pre-tax or the post-tax total? Now it might not seem like much, but tipping that way actually saves you $4. And if you do that again in a week, that's a whopping $8. But if you extrapolate that out for 52 weeks in a year, you could save over 400 bucks. And if you do that every day for 600 years, that's a whopping quarter million dollars you're saving in tips. I bet you never knew that if you just spent less money on tips, it would cost you less money to tip people. What? What's the, what, how is that advice? From an etiquette standpoint, tipping on pre-tax is absolutely fine. You don't have to tip on what you are already being taxed upon. I never knew that before. This is so incredibly stupid. I can't tell what's worse about this video, how insulting it is to servers, basically saying like, you know, you can just fuck over your waitress by giving them less money. Or is it the fact that he acts like he's a fucking genius for coming up with this. Well, he's so smart. But the best part of this video, I don't know why they kept this in. They're like interviewing all these people on the street, doing the same thing they did to us. Hey, excuse me, did you know that if you gave less money to your waiter that uh, you would give less money to your waiter? I never knew that before. But they kept in the response from this girl who basically shits all over their stupid ass idea. Now that I'm thinking about it, it feels a little dirty. Dirty? It just feels like you're going out of your way almost to look at the number that's clearly gonna give that person less money just because. Thank you. In the end, how much you choose to tip is up to you. Thank you. How much you choose to save is just as well. It's so kind of sending at the end too. It's like, well, I taught you how to save money. It's on you now if you don't do that. If you can live with yourself for being a good person who tips appropriately, I guess. That's your prerogative. That's a whopping $8. God, the audacity of not just making this video, but framing it in a way where it's like, he acts like we wouldn't know that, that if we gave less money to the waiter, that we would save money. Who is this for, a baby? Plus, if you're really that concerned about spending so much money on tips, maybe don't eat out as much. Maybe just make some meals at home quickly and easily and affordably with HelloFresh. Today's video, just kidding, not yet. <laughs> I will be doing that in a little bit, but not yet. There's more stuff to talk about first. Next thing. So this one doesn't make me mad. It's just hilarious, but it's this local news team trying so hard to relate to kids. I love this because it starts off so bad, but every time you think it can't possibly get worse, it does. They keep adding another layer to it. Let's just watch. Good morning, TPS students. It is testing week and it's time to slay all day. Yeet. Stay woke beyond fleek 
and get that Gucci breakfast. Goals! <laughs> Say bye, Felicia, to that testing stress. Weather's gonna be turned, right, Chris? Yes! 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 Toledo weather gonna be the lit during testing week. A hundo P chance of success. You've got this, kids. Steve, how about that traffic? Are we looking oh better than oh we're talking turn. <laughs> this is poetry. It's so beautifully, perfectly crafted the way they just layer it on top of each other. Oh, it's so bad. It's perfect. Yes! It's so funny when adults try to talk like kids and they think because they're using the right words that their disguise is working. Like a teenager is gonna watch this and be like, oh wow, I guess they really are one of us. Like, no, they're gonna see right through it. This is the speech equivalent of putting on a little fake mustache and trying to pass yourself off as someone else. We still know it's you. Last thing. Shifting tones a bit again, cause this last thing really pissed me off. So I was going through Twitter last night and I saw a tweet from a girl named Ashley C bitch. Am I saying that right? Why does it seem like I'm not saying that right? Anyway, this girl Ashley tweeted out a video of this guy watching the new Star Wars trailer and he is so happy. He is filled with joy from watching the Star Wars trailer. And I watched the video and I couldn't help but smile at how fucking happy this guy is. I wish the trailer made me feel like that. I love feeling like that. I, I, I think it's beautiful when something can make you feel the kind of joy that this guy clearly feels. But of course, that's not why she tweeted out the video. She tweeted out the video to talk about how undateable men are who obsess over movies. Basically just bullying this guy for enjoying something that she doesn't. Why does it matter if this guy loves Star Wars? How does that affect you? What this guy is expressing in this video is like the greatest feeling in the world. Who cares that it's Star Wars and you don't like Star Wars? I don't really like Star Wars that much anymore. But who fucking cares? Let him enjoy his thing. If someone feels like this and they're not hurting somebody, I don't care what it is that makes him feel that way. I don't care if it's sitting down and flipping through the phone book. It doesn't affect you, Ashley. No one said you had to date this guy. There's like three billion dudes on Earth. You don't have to date all of them. According to some of the comments on here, this guy's married and I bet she likes Star Wars too. Good for them. They get to enjoy it together. They get to share something they like together. That's great. That's what life's all about, you bitch. And because you don't like the thing he likes, because you don't find him attractive, let's shit all over him and bully him in front of all your followers. What are you accomplishing by doing that? Showing how cool you are? Because you don't like popular stuff? You're so quirky. Oh, what's that in your bio? You don't think Amy Schumer is funny? Wow, what a hot take. What a bold opinion that no one else has had before. You are so interesting, Ashley. And I know you're probably just upset because you saw this guy who you think is a loser and you realized he's married and you're all alone and that probably makes you feel like a loser. But I'm here to tell you, Ashley, don't give up because there's millions of different people out there who like all sorts of things and even someone like you who sucks in every conceivable way can find someone who will put up with it. All you gotta do is find someone who's an asshole on the internet for no goddamn reason, who hates Star Wars just as much as you do and is willing to make fun of anybody who doesn't, and oh my god, it's the guy from earlier. I figured it out. These two are soulmates, and they're missing out by not being together because they're perfect for each other, they both hate Star Wars, and they both suck, so let's make it happen. Let's finally use my platform for something good and get these two people to notice each other and fall in love and hopefully move very far away from the rest of the world where there's no internet and everyone's better off for it. Wow, who knew that this rant video would end with such a beautiful love story? This is what the internet should be used for, for bringing people together, not for bullying a guy, for liking something that he likes and who isn't hurting anyone else by doing so. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's not very often that I break a sweat by talking in a chair. Anyway, now seems like as good a time as any to hear a word from my sponsor. Has this ever happened to you? Wow, I sure am glad I bought all those onions four months ago and never did anything with them. I feel like I waste so much food. There has to be a better way. Well, actually, there is. Who said that? Drew, what? I'm just the narrator. Yeah, that's exactly what a burglar would say. 
I know you're in here somewhere, and I'm gonna find you. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, HelloFresh is your solution to conquering dinner time by getting delicious and simple meals sent to your front door every single week, starting at just $6.99 per serving. HelloFresh does all the meal planning and prepping and shopping, so you don't have to go to the store and get a million different ingredients you'll never use. You don't have to wait in line behind that guy who's writing a check. Dude, just use your debit card. It's the same thing. Each meal comes together in 30 minutes or less. The recipes are always unique and interesting and will help you get out of the rut of eating that one meal you always eat because it's the only thing you know how to make. Talking to you, grilled cheese. Aha! Drew, I'm not in your shower. I'm not anywhere. I'm just a voice. A voice? <gasps> NBC's The Voice. You're in my television. No, that's not what I- There are three plans to choose from, classic, family, and veggie, which is the one Amanda and I use because finding good vegetarian recipes has always been a challenge for us, and we've discovered a bunch of great new foods because of it. It actually looks pretty good. <laughs> I learned I love farro now, and risotto. I had never had risotto before, and then I made theirs a couple weeks ago, and it was amazing. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Narrator. How about I cut you a deal? I won't call the police, as long as you tell me where you got all that delicious food. Don't you get it, Drew? I'm you. You already made all this food. <gasps> I did? Oh wait, I remember that now. Duh, we've been using HelloFresh for like a year now. That's why I have all these recipe cards conveniently lying on the counter right here. They were all so good. And hey, if you guys wanna get $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com or click the link in the description and use my promo code I'm a little stinker 80 to get $20 off each of your first four boxes. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and I'm gonna go sit back down in my chair. Well, I gotta wrap this video up now because I've got uh, several home-cooked meals in the other room. I know I rant about shit on this channel and I like to make fun of things, but I try to separate the thing I'm making fun of from the person doing it. Unless the person sucks or what they're doing is shitty. But if you like something and it's not hurting anybody, don't let anybody bully you and tell you that you're not, you can't like that because they don't like it. I guess when it comes down to it, all I'm really saying is be yourself. And that's the kind of advice you can only get on the Drew Gooden YouTube channel. So smash that notification bell, buy my merch, and I'll see you tomorrow.